Hello, yeah, sorry about that. My volume button just decided to completely stop working, which was great fun. One week to go until the Ryder Cup kicks off in Paris. Yes, please. And I am in the very lucky position of going out to the event. Uh, be, it won't be my first Ryder Cup. I went to the Belfry in 2002 when I was a wee nipper. I was probably way too small to actually see my, most of the action. So I'm really, really, really excited to be heading out to Paris. I've also never been to Paris as a city itself. So looking forward to exploring the city a little bit when I'm not at the course. But yeah, I'm heading out to uh, the Golf National. We've got 1,200 clients coming out with us this year. Um, so we're definitely adding to the Team Europe army quite nicely, I think. So, you know, well done your golf travel. And today I'm just gonna have a little brief kind of one week to go preview of the Ryder Cup. My thoughts as well as thoughts of some other people as well, including Vice Captain Lee Westwood. I get your opinions on various uh, things like European wildcards, whether or not you're going to go to the Ryder Cup, whether or not you've been to the Ryder Cup in the past. So I'll be asking various questions throughout the video. Um, but yeah, let's talk Ryder Cup. here please boys go on team europe i guess the first obvious thing to talk about are the four team europe wildcards um now obviously these were announced uh last week week before definitely the week before i've just realized i was filming the island last week so now everyone's entitled to their opinion um but living a decent chunk of my let's say professional life on the internet i've seen a lot of pretty wild opinions floating around um concerning Thomas Bjorn's picks and I think it's quite natural for a sports fan to kind of overreact to certain situations. Um, everyone's kind of going on about the strength of the American team and on paper it's a brilliant team but on paper Team Europe's also brilliant and I think the rookies that are coming along for Team Europe this year are in a lot better form uh, and certainly in a lot higher up the world rankings than let's say the rookies who went to Hazeltine in 2016. And with those rookies it's totally understandable in my opinion that Thomas Bjorn went for a wealth of experience in his wildcard picks um, and I posted a tweet a few weeks or when the when people were kind of kicking off about um, the lack of form a couple of the uh, European wildcard picks are showing this year particularly Sergio um, but the point I was trying to make in the tweet I sent out was we got to remember that Thomas Bjorn and all the vice captains speaking to these guys all the time and I genuinely do not think that uh, Sergio or Henrik Stenson or anyone would accept a wildcard pick if they felt they couldn't compete uh, in match play form out, out in Paris in fact, Sergio has already previously removed himself from the Ryder Cup equation back in uh, Celtic Manor, I believe. Said, wasn't playing well enough or was too distracted to play. So he went out there as a non-playing vice captain. Uh, I have no hesitation to think that he would do that again if he was really worried about the way his game shaping up. Admittedly, he hasn't been at his best this season, but I do think uh, with his Ryder Cup pedigree, um, he's a major winner. Um, I definitely think he can get his game on track with a bit of renewed focus and I would imagine he's probably put in a lot more practice and uh, focus over the last few weeks or months even. And I expect a good showing from Sergio as I do from Stenson. Uh, obviously he's been injured but he showed brilliant form at the start of the season playing, in, playing well in massive events like the Masters, the US Open. So again like Sergio I don't think he would have accepted a wild card had he been worried about that injury which has held him back for the last few weeks. I would imagine he's probably fully fit and a fully fit Henrik Stenson can't be a bad thing to have on a Ryder Cup team. As for the other two, obviously Pulse was just an obvious pick uh, and he showed great form this season as well. 
Um, great form under the severe pressure at times too, and obviously the Ryder Cup brings with it a lot of pressure. So no surprises to see Pulse there, and absolutely delighted that he's on the team. Similarly with Paul Casey, great to have him back in the fray. Um, his recommitment back to the European Tour to get his name back in the hat is an obvious sign that he definitely wants to be there. And he's played well at certain points this year too. Um, so yeah, I think the European wildcard picks are all good ones. But let me know what you think. Who would you have picked had you been in Thomas Bjorn's shoes? Would you have gone with the four that were picked? Would you have gone with other people? Are you happy with the picks? Are you worried? Uh, let's just remember not to overreact. Um, I do think the four picks that we've got uh, brings a nice balance to the team and I do think they'll do well. So we see what Westy thinks. So you've appeared in 10 Ryder Cups as a player. This is your first time out as vice captain as far as I know. Um, what, are, what exactly are the key responsibilities of a vice captain at the Ryder Cup? We obviously see them operating in the background but we don't really know what they get up to. Um, to help and assist the captain with decisions on and off the golf course. Thomas rang me this morning, I was at the gym and uh, he put me off my overhead squats. Uh, but it was just to ask about something from the Ryder Cup the last time round. So, you know, I guess with me, Thomas has got 20 years, 10 Ryder Cups of experience to, for me to use to advise him. Um, and then obviously, uh, after all that, I'm, I'm the coffee boy. <laughs> you make a mean cup of coffee then, do you? <laughs> I fetch a mean cup of coffee. All oh, right, good man. Um, and presumably you were all heavily involved in the selection of the wild cards. Yeah. And how, I mean, when does that process start? Is that right back at the beginning or is that much more uh, close to the time? Well, the team starts to take shape and obviously chops and changes. Some people are in and then they drop out. So you can't really say these are going to be the picks, but with a few weeks to go, we had a fair idea who we wanted in there to fit with the players that were pretty much certain of being in. Mm -hmm. And did you feel like there was one player in particular who was unlucky to miss out on a wild card? No. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, you can't consider yourself unlucky if you don't get a wild card. You should have just played your way in. You're lucky to get a wild card. Yeah, but not unlucky not to miss out on. You don't get one. Cool. Uh, so what do Sergio, Paul Casey, Henrik and Pulse bring to the table? I mean, apart from vast amount of experience. They are very pairable. You know, we pick people that we can play different, lots of different people with. And they're all obviously high quality players. So, And we know they can all play under the most intense pressure, which the Ryder Cup is. Here's a bit of a standard social media question for you. If you could pick one player from any era that you could hand a wild card to who would play this year, who would it be, European-wise? Playing at the best? Yes. Seven. I did expect that might be the answer. Monty, no? Bit of a Ryder Cup beast as well? Seppi. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, so what's the one thing that YGT clients travelling out to Paris next week for the Ryder Cup should check out during their time away from the golf course? The wine. The wine, <laughs> fair enough. Any particular restaurant where they could get a good, good glass? <laughs> they're all good. They're all yeah, good. Well, I can't say they're all good, but there's so many great sights to see in Paris. The obvious ones. And um, just have a stroll around, have a coffee, have a croissant, have a glass of red wine, because that's that, that time of day. And by that time of day, I mean after nine o'clock. <laughs> then we we'll talk about the golf course now. What makes Le Golf National, in your opinion, uh, a good pick as a Ryder Cup venue? Um, it's very accessible, great for crowds. There's a lot of mounding around the holes, especially the last few. There's a lot of water in play, so this golf course there's a lot of shots where you've got to show you show what you made up really mm -hmm. is there any particular hole that stands out that you might see lots of drama on um, coming down the stretch well I think that for last four obviously people are gonna pick out but 12 13 14 could have a big bearing you know there's Especially 13, there's water off the tee and water on the second shot, depending on the pins. Um, I've, I've always found 13 one of the most awkward shots of the year, the tee shot especially on the European Tour. So uh, I think uh, I think people, you know, should will be drawn to the last four holes, but 
12, 13, 14 are going to be uh, as pivotal as those, obviously. You know, if you can get up going into them last four holes, or even at one by then, then obviously, you know, you take all the pressure off yourself. But they're going to be, uh, they're going to be tricky holes. Well, let's, let's go for one more. Are we going to see a uh, Jamie Donaldson style interview with you if you win? I want, I want to see you in a yellow hoodie outside the venue on, right. mon on Monday morning if you win. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. <laughs> it's a long night. Yeah, I bet it was. Um, well, best of luck next week. Thank you. Uh, I'll probably, I don't know if I'll be seeing you out there, but maybe not. Um, I've got one more favour to ask. I'll turn the camera off now in a sec. As I said, uh, we've got 1,200 guests coming out to Paris with us this year um, and obviously as well as the Ryder Cup tickets we've sorted out accommodation, transport to and from France, transfers once they get there so they can get to and from the course and their accommodation easily without having to drive. No one wants to be the designated driver at the Ryder Cup do they? Um, and some of our high rollers, absolute ballers you could call them, <laughs> um, they're actually getting the Eurostar from King's Cross, which is kind of like down that way a little bit. Um, and they're getting the business class lounge and while that would be cool enough for most we like to do things a little bit better than that so uh, we've organized for Ian Woosden, former Ryder Cup star, former Ryder Cup captain uh, at the K Club I think he was captain uh, to host these guys on the business class on the Eurostar all the way to Paris um, hopefully I'm going to be able to sneak into the carriage as well maybe pick his brains in the Ryder Cup and that's not the only perk that YGC clients will be getting out in Paris I'll talk to you more about that in a sec So yeah, on top of perks like being able to get the Eurostar with the likes of Ian Wisdom, obviously you're paying extra for that. Um, but all Ryder Cup clients next week get this lovely little Your Golf Travel pack. Um, and one of the coolest things is that we've got a couple of parties. Uh, we've got one in Versailles and one in uh, somewhere else in Paris. Now, Paul McGinley is attending one party to a Q&A and Ian Wisdom will attend the other one. Um, so it's really unique access to uh, two people who know an awful lot about the Ryder Cup are an important part of the Ryder Cup history and we're just treating our clients to an evening of drinks, food, general merriment among like-minded golfers and just be able to listen to the insights that these guys are going to give. It's like a really unique perk that we like to offer our clients. We do something very similar at the Masters where I got to speak to Paul. Hopefully I'll be able to grab five minutes of his time again, pick his brains about the, uh, the Ryder Cup. We've also got little gift cards. So why see clients shopping at this uh, particular gallery in Paris will uh, be able to get their hands on lovely little gifts or a 50 euro restaurant voucher. Yes, please. Um, and obviously we provide our guests with as much information as possible, uh, all the information they might need while they're on site in Paris, as well as a lovely area guide. Um, we're talking recommended bars, recommended restaurant, top tips, a little map. Um, I think there's another little map. Yeah. An actual full map of Paris as well. We do not want our clients getting lost. So there we go. Area guide to Paris. Vouchers, gift cards, party invites. We like to go above and beyond for our customers at the Ryder Cup. Right, so I suppose the next thing to talk about is the golf course, uh, the Albatross course at the Golf National. Um, I have not played the course. Uh, we did a, your golf travel to the media trip out there a couple of years ago, and this was just before I really started getting going with the video stuff, so I missed out on that one. Uh, judging by the vlogs, it's probably a good thing that I did. Yards. I reckon you're about five yards either side as well. Considering the amount of water on that course and the width of some of those fairways, but I would absolutely love to have gone, obviously. Um, I'm sure I'll play the course in the years to come, but from the vlogs uh, over on Mark Crossley's channel and from talking to the guys about the course when they came back, having spoken with Lee earlier, 
um, and having spoken to him previously as well, because they play the French Open there every year on the European Tour. Um, the course is tight and fiddly in places. Uh, it's not going to be a bomber's paradise, which I think hopefully might play into the hands of the European team. Um, as Lee said earlier, there's lots of... <coughs> Christ, my voice went there. There's lots of mounds on the sides of the fairway, so it's gonna feel very, very stadium, and hopefully with the home support, it's gonna be a great atmosphere for the European team to play, and it's gonna be a great atmosphere regardless of which side you're on. But um, yeah, with the amount of water in play all around the course, and particularly on the back nine, as Lee said, from 12 onwards, we could see a lot of matches swinging this way and that, um, balls going in the water, people making birdies. I think they'll set the course up quite easily in comparison with, let's say, the French Open. Uh, we all love to see birdies flying in at the Ryder Cup. So yeah, I definitely want to play that course at some point. Uh, have any of you guys played the course at Le Golf National? Post some comments down below. If you have, let me know what you think of the course. Be interested to hear your thoughts. And moving forward, are any of you planning on playing that course when the event is uh, been and gone from uh, Le Golf National? Is it an option for next year? If so, post some comments down below. Drop me any questions you might have about what holiday there might look like. Yeah, all I know really is that I'm bloody excited for next week. It's going to be a long one. I'll hopefully be posting a video every day. I'll try my best. I can't promise though because I'll obviously be at the event uh, doing various other things and the editing process takes quite a while. So I'll do my best to get you guys a live look at the event from a daily perspective. Um, I'm in at the golf on Friday, I'm in at the golf on Sunday as well for the singles, which would be great. Um, and then Saturday, uh, myself and a colleague are going to spend the day exploring Paris, showing you guys what the city's all about and what the feel is at a Ryder Cup away from the golf course. Obviously, golf holidays are mostly about the golf and tournament holidays are mostly about the tournament, but there are other things that all contribute to making these experiences all the more special. Um, so if any of you guys have any suggestions of things that I should be doing in Paris, I've never been, whack some comments down below. I'm asking for an awful lot of comments, but uh, yeah, join in the conversation. And finally, let me know who you think is going to win. Smash some uh, Team USA or Team Europe comments down there. Subscribe to your Golf Travel channel if you haven't already to get notifications for when these Ryder Cup videos go live next week. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys from Paris. <laughs>